everybody, welcome to Katie in the Morning and welcome to Monday. I'm Katie Page, Director of Member Relations at the National Association of Healthcare Assistants. I hope you all had a fabulous weekend and I hope we're starting out your day right. Uh, today we're going to talk about one of the things that is my very least or was my very least thing, favorite thing to do. Uh, I don't know why, it's just something that I'm not, I mean it's really easy to do, it takes very little time to do it, it's just something that I've always, always seen, seen as like an extra towards our job until I became a member of NACA and it was explained to me why this is important. And that is um, intake of fluids and solids and why it's important to record those. Um, the first thing I want to talk to you guys about today is the actual process of recording intake and um, fluids and solids intake completely, whether it is mealtime, whether it's snacks, whether it is that ice pitcher that you're dumping at the beginning of your shift to refill, um, whose responsibility is it to do it and why is it important to do it? Um, the responsibility seems to be shifting from the dietary department to the CNA staff because we are responsible for recording everything in the ADL section as far as um, mobility, transfers, repositioning, and mealtime is going to be another huge one that is spreading with the culture change evolution that's spreading across the nation. So here are a few tips for you when it comes to recording intake, whether it's solids or liquids. Carry a notebook with you during mealtimes. Um, see, a lot of places have seating charts, but there's it's becoming a more of a... a progressive thing where residents get to pick and choose where they sit on a daily basis. So as you're walking around the dining room, whether you're helping to assist residents that can't feed themselves anymore, or whether you're clearing residents out of the dining room, or whether you're even bussing the tables in those more um, neighborhood-based facilities rather than the um, institutionalized kind of setting, uh, carry that notebook with you and just jot down like their initials. Anybody that's on your hallway that you're responsible for charting for, jot down their initials, what percentage they took in of solids and what percent or what the amount was in CCs that they ate. Um, this will help you later if you have to go back and chart it at a later time. It'll help you to remember which people ate what, um, kind of how they did and that sort of thing. The next tip is to pay attention to the dietary orders. I cannot tell you how important this is. Whether they are on a pureed diet, mechanical soft diet, small portions diet, low sodium diet, the diabetics have less sugar in their meals. That's something that we really, really have to pay attention to because there's a lot of adverse reactions, what kind of medications they're on. Um, I mean, this is just, I mean, I cannot express to you how important this is to follow those dietary orders. They do have the option of requesting other things. So say they're a diabetic and you're having a big old brownie for dessert and they keep saying, I want that brownie, I want that brownie, I want that brownie. It isn't their right to have that, but you have to explain what is going to happen or what could potentially happen if they take in too much sugar. Uh, if there's somebody who's very with it, if they if they uh, they know everything, all the risks of doing that, they still have the option of doing it. Once again, this is with the culture change that's sweeping the nation. It is in their right to do things that may not be so healthy for them, as long as you are explaining the reaction that could happen if they make that choice to do it. Uh, the next point, or what I wanted to give you guys when it comes to um, kind of monitoring their meals, is to report to your nurses if you notice anything out of the ordinary. I mean, anything at all. Um, meal times, I don't know why it is associated with this period, but you see a lot of strokes happening. Um, maybe it's because they're getting up and getting that action, getting that movement, uh, getting out to the table, eating their meals. But one of the main signs of a stroke is that drooping on the left side of their face, the inability to use that one half of their body. Those are things that you need to be monitoring for if somebody is having problems swallowing, uh, if they're drinking less and less, if they're eating less and less, if they're eating more. Like I said, this goes back to the adverse reactions with the medication. This is the time that you're going to see a lot of those behaviors happen. If they are becoming incontinent during meal times, you may need to increase their toileting schedule. Uh, if they have onset, onset dementia, that can be one of the effects that it has on them during mealtime is that, that incontinence that is increasing. So always make sure that you're reporting it to your charge nurses. The person before you may have noticed it and didn't report it. The person after you may have noticed it and not report it, but don't let that person be you that sees these signs and symptoms and doesn't report them to your nurse. Uh, the next thing I'd like to kind of give you guys a little bit of advice on is always express your concerns. 
Um, if that nurse doesn't listen to you, if they kind of brush it under the table, you know, write a note to yourself, or if you have a shift report sheet, write it on there so the next shift knows, this is what I noticed about Mr. Taylor during the meal time, or he did this and he usually doesn't do that, or he didn't do this when he normally does. Uh, like I said, this is the most, we are the eyes and ears of the facility. We are the number one responder, so to speak, for these residents. So always make sure that you're expressing those concerns and make sure that it gets addressed. Make sure there's a follow-up. Make sure you're following up within 24 hours, within two hours. You know, if it happened at breakfast and you're a day shift worker, your shift doesn't end till uh, about halfway almost to supper time. You know, you have breakfast, you have lunch, you have activities. Make sure you're following up on that and make sure that something's been noted or something is being done um, about those situations. We're going to take a short break and when we come back, we're going to talk about exactly what those categories are with solids and liquids and how to document them. Welcome back to Katie in the morning. Today we're talking about documenting mealtime snacks intake, whether it is solids or liquids. Uh, so I wanted to run through the standard categories for the solid intake and what those kind of mean for the person that's eating that meal. The first one is 0% or refused. Um, this is when you're wanting to attempt to offer them something else and document at least three times that you offered a supplement for their meal. Uh, this is a huge part, uh, especially when it comes to like Medicare and Medicaid documentation to make sure that you are documenting that something else was offered. Uh, the zero to 25%, um, if it's happening continuously, make sure you're offering those alternatives to those meals. Uh, they may just be something as simple as their appetite changing or if it's like a week span, it could be like the seasonal menu that they're they're not digging salads like you know like the potato salad the macaroni salad the pea salad so always make sure that you're offering alternatives with the zero to 25 percent too 25 to 50 percent that's where you're getting up to the half their meal is eaten on a three times a day basis plus snacks and plus uh, push, pushing fluids in their room and during snack time they don't really worry about this category a whole lot but always make sure once again that you're that you're offering those alternatives. The 50 to 75% is usually the normal intake um, where they're getting the nourishment that they need from each meal and they really don't worry about it. But once again, if you're closer to that 50%, make sure that you're offering a snack or an alternative to them. And then the 75 to 100%, this is where you kind of run into the opposite reaction. If they're eating 100% every single time and still asking for seconds or another dessert or a snack right after the meal time, you may need to ask your nurse to get to with the dietary department head or the nutritionist and kind of reevaluate re their meal plan to make sure that they're not over consuming um, and to make sure that we're, that we're fitting those needs as well. Uh, when it comes to the fluid intake, this is the part where it is so controversial. Like CNAs, we get so confused about what means what. Here's a standard for you guys to go with. Uh, one ounce is equal to 30 cc's. Uh, almost every single cup that you have is a standard cup. Um, it's either four ounces, six ounces, eight ounces, 10 ounces, or 12 ounces. Uh, so you just take that times whatever size cup you, you have. And if Gary, if you'll pull up the next slide, I actually have one prepared for you guys uh, as a standard cup size and how many cc's are with those, those ounces of those cups. So with the four ounce cup, four times three, is 12, so you add that extra zero on there, you got the 120 cc's for the small cup. And those are usually the standard like medication cups, the little plastic ones that the med aides or the nurses are giving with their pills. Um, the six ounce cups, 180 cc's, the eight ounce cups, 240 cc's, the 10 ounce cups, 300 cc's. 
as a general rule, the um, cups that are in their room, like the hospital cups, are generally between 500 and 750 cc's, but they have those marked out on those cups. So make sure, make sure when you're dumping those ice pitchers and getting that water in there for the next shift that you're documenting their intake of fluids at that time too, because not only is that giving you credit, but also, also those people with those fluid restrictions, making sure that they're staying in their restriction. So the last slide that I have for you guys is the when to document. Um, when should you document their intake? I mean, it's pretty simple. Um, anytime that they eat or drink, that is when it should be documented. Uh, the standard meal times, the snack times, when refilling those water cups, and at the end of your shift. Um, like I said, it's really easy to carry a notebook with you and just jot down like, JR 240 cc's at 1600 or I do military time because it's easier for me to, to differentiate when you work multiple shifts um, or meal time 75% intake was 420 you know just make sure that you're writing those down so you don't forget them later carry it in your pocket uh, I traditional traditionally I generally dump out my pockets before I go home at the end of the shift when you're starting to pull those papers out like oh I didn't document document this one Go back, make sure that you document it. If it's something that you get home and notice in your pocket, bring it with you the next day and you can back chart from the day before majority of the time. I thank you guys all for joining me today. Have a wonderful week and I will see you right back here tomorrow for Katie in the morning.